The Hermano Way. Building a better world through a better you. Apart, we can make an effort, but together, we can make a difference. The design of the study was fairly straightforward. Give people DMT and measure as many variables as possible. Um, in, the, in the case of this study, which was going to be the first new psychedelic research in the U.S. really for over 20 years, uh, I, I had to sort of anticipate a lot of objections that would come my way uh, from the regulatory agencies that oversee this kind of research. Um, and for that reason, among others, I chose to only study experienced psychedelic users. I was able to, with some confidence, conclude that uh, if you gave people psychedelic drugs, if they were carefully screened volunteers, uh, if, if you supervised their experiences carefully, if you followed up with them afterwards um, responsibly, um, that the incidence of any, really any serious adverse effects was quite low. I think that given the right conditions, uh, most normal people can withstand and even benefit from the psychedelic experience. My own life in, in, many, in many ways has been profoundly affected by my encounters with DMT. Uh, and those encounters have been mainly with DMT in the ayahuasca brew. In every level, both at the, at the level of personal development as, as a human being and in the sense of a contact with a wider reality, it's been a, an astonishingly helpful and positive experience and one that I would not wish to discontinue. Some trauma they may have experienced, they could feel that more acutely and let go into it in a way they hadn't before, sort of work it through, kind of work out those knots as it were in their body and their minds. Um, some people had issues that came up sort of symbolically about their, um, about their relationships that were troubled and they saw some of those dynamics a bit more clearly and felt them a little more deeply. It seemed like I was sort of orchestrating or supervising or maintaining people's bodies when, they were, when their minds and their spirits were just really someplace else. So it really seemed, it seemed holy or sacred in a way, you know, that I was helping these people have near-death and spiritual experiences. The chemistry of their brain, which is the organ of consciousness, was being changed by DMT in such a way that they could then receive information um, that we weren't able to receive normally. People <clears throat> described it as being shot out of a nuclear cannon or being at ground zero, those sorts of things, just with uh, being obl obliterated in a ball of light and sound. There's definitely a feeling of acceleration. There's an overwhelming, you know, deluge of uh, colors and, and complex geometric patterns and then even resolving into more complex type of things, uh, you know, visions of cities, of entities. A number of people, actually a large number of people, um, came back reporting tales, reports of uh, being in alternate realities, uh, freestanding alternate realities that were inhabited um, by, by intelligent beings who expected them, who knew they were there, who were awaiting them sometimes, who interacted with them. See, the basic problem we have to solve is, why is it that people all around the world, when they enter altered states of consciousness, have remarkably similar experiences of realms that, according to orthodox science, are supposed to be non-real? They repeatedly and uniformly say the experience is more real than real. It's the, it's the most real thing that's ever happened to them. Um, that this reality just seems like a dream compared to the pure, you know, solidity and convincing nature of what happens um, under high dose of DMT. It started seeming to me that was that what was happening with DMT, uh, particularly with respect to uh, some of these reports of entering parallel or alternate or freestanding parallel sorts of realms of existence, is that that indeed was what their consciousness was doing. 